In the coastal charm of South Carolina, a story unfolded that would captivate the nation. The mysterious disappearance of Heather Rochelle Elvis. Nestled in the heart of Myrtle Beach, Heather's life was a blend of southern warmth and vibrant dreams, until an unexpected turn of events led to a puzzle that still echoes through the quiet seaside town. Heather, with her vivacious spirit and dreams of a brighter future, was a beloved daughter and sister. Her magnetic personality left an impression on everyone she met, but as the story unfolds, we'll discover that beneath the surface, some secrets and twists would shape the narrative of her life. Heather Rochelle Elvis was born on June 30, 1993, in Horry County, South Carolina, to Terry and Debbie Elvis. She was described as determined, the life of the party, free-spirited, and had a huge personality. She enjoyed doing makeup and wished to pursue it as a career. Heather was a talented, cheerful, and supposedly happy 20-year-old girl. She was very artistic and would frequently share her thoughts and interests on social media. Heather was known to be a bit rebellious as she lived her life the way that she wanted to and didn't waste any time caring about what other people thought about her. After graduating from St. James High School in Merle's Inlet in 2011 and eager to experience her independence, her parents allowed her to move into her apartment in Myrtle Beach with her best friend, Brianna. To support herself while studying cosmetology, Heather had two part-time jobs, one at the House of Blues in North Myrtle Beach and the other at a Scottish-themed restaurant called The Tilted Kiln in Myrtle Beach. She had a good job, great friends, a tight-knit family, and everything in her life seemed to be on track. But like every 20-year-old girl, there were secrets and things that her family did not know about and would not find out about until it was too late. One day in the summer of 2013, Heather was working her usual shift at the Tilted Kiln when an older man caught her eye. This was the maintenance worker, Sidney Moorer. Sidney was a 37-year-old married man who had three children. His wife, Tammy, was a 40-year-old stay-at-home mother and a part-time travel agent whom he had been married to since 1997. Sidney had his own maintenance company and would come by to repair things in the restaurant's kitchen. It was no secret that Heather had a crush on Sidney, even though he was much older, and the two of them would engage in harmless flirting at work. Heather would tell her friend Brianna about what he said to her and what they did. She was completely smitten with this man. Heather, who was also very active on her social media accounts, was not shy in tweeting about her feelings towards Sydney. On June 12, 2013, she tweeted, I got a taste for older men. On July 7th, one month later, she tweeted, The guy who builds things at my job makes me want to cream myself. On the same day, she tweeted, one of these days I'm going to drag that man into the mop closet and have my way with him. It soon became clear that Sidney was also attracted to Heather, and the two began an affair. Sidney would often bring Heather coffee and bagels when she was at work, even on his days off. They would text each other back and forth, and the relationship soon turned physical. At 7.12pm on July 10th, Heather tweeted, Baby did a bad, bad thing. A minute later, she followed up with, I'm in way too deep, but watch me get in deeper. Heather was head over heels in love with Sydney. She told her sister how much they loved each other and how they saw a future together. Throughout the affair, Heather was aware that Sydney had a wife. However, Sydney had told her that he was in an open marriage and was no longer in love with Tammy. He even claimed that Tammy had a boyfriend of her own and they were only living together for financial reasons and the sake of the kids. Being young and naive, this was exactly what Heather had wanted to hear, and she believed every word. Her friends didn't approve of their relationship because he was 17 years older than Heather, and on top of that, Sidney was a married man. He had been married for 15 years, to his wife, 40-year-old Tammy. The affair was not a secret at Heather's workplace, and she would often be teased by her colleagues. The situation began to get out of hand, to the point where some colleagues wrote on a mirror at work, Stop f***ing a married man. Okay, thanks. One of the girls also phoned the restaurant posing as Tammy looking for Heather. Heather panicked and left work straight away thinking that Tammy was going to show up at any moment. Their affair lasted until September 2013, when Heather tweeted, Once upon a time, an angel and a devil fell in love. It did not end well, referring to her relationship with Sydney. Tammy found out about the affair 
and it's not clear how she found out, but she did, and people close to Heather said that once the affair had been discovered by Tammy, it was like all hell broke loose. Soon after discovering her husband's affair with the young waitress, Tammy phoned Heather saying, You're going to end it with my husband. Tammy then put Sydney on the phone and listened, while Sydney began to tell Heather that she meant nothing to him, that it was over, and that she was just someone who spread their legs, amongst other insults. That greatly knocked Heather's confidence and self-worth. Over the next few weeks, she tried to focus on rebuilding herself and directing her sights on her goals and work. Tammy, however, was only just getting started. Tammy forced Sydney to get her name tattooed above his crotch and was overheard telling him, well, this wouldn't have happened if you didn't mess around with that girl. She would also handcuff him to the bed at night so that he could not sneak out. Over the next few weeks, Tammy continued to send nasty texts to Heather, and she even once called Heather 40 times in a single day. Heather believed that taunting Tammy was the best way to deal with the situation, saying things like, why are you texting me? You should be worried about your husband. Tammy would take it a step further and send Heather pictures of both Tammy and Sydney in bed together, getting intimate. Tammy continued to contact Heather, asking, Hey, sweetie, ready to meet the missus? Heather responded a couple of days later on November 1st, saying, I think you're a little obsessed with me. No need to worry about me anymore. On November 5th, Tammy responded, By the way, Dad no longer owns a phone referring to Sydney's lack of a phone, which prevented her from contacting him. Tammy also tried to get Heather fired from the tilted kilt, calling the restaurant every day and telling them that Sydney would no longer fix things as long as Heather was working there. It was also reported that Sydney texted Heather again, saying that Tammy wasn't entitled to feel the way she did about the affair and act the way she did because she too had a lover. But this turned out to be a lie. They both agreed to call it quits, because nothing good was coming from it. Heather, on the other hand, told Sydney that she wanted Tammy to stop calling the restaurant because she lost hours of work and was sent home because Tammy kept calling. Heather and Sydney last saw each other on November 5th after they agreed to end their relationship. On Twitter, she retweeted a tweet by a comedian that you could say was a little personal. The tweet read, Hey married fellas, you can either cheat on your wife or murder her. Never both because that is when you get caught. Heartbroken, but remaining determined to move on from the situation, Heather continued to work on herself, with those close to her commenting on how she had got her smile back. Things also started to look up for Heather when she was offered a job in a beauty salon. She was one step closer to her dream job. As for the texts and calls from Tammy, Heather began to get used to them and continued to ignore them thinking that Tammy would eventually get bored and move on. On November 19th, Sydney and Tammy decided to buy a brand new black Ford F-150 and drive to California with their children to visit Disneyland as a way to rekindle their romance, whereby the trip lasted three weeks. Meanwhile, despite Heather's life taking a turn for the better, it would not be long before those around her began to notice that she was gaining weight so much so that she had to be given a new uniform at work as her usual one no longer fit. Heather went from having a size A cup size on her bra to a size C cup, and she also went from a medium sized skirt to a large. These are all changes that are typically associated with someone pregnant, so finally Heather took a test at work one day, and it came back invalid. It is not known for certain whether or not Heather was pregnant, but it was considered a very strong possibility given the changes in her physical appearance and the fact that she was known to be having a very intimate relationship with Sydney Moore. Her confidence was coming back and she organized a date with a guy who was closer to her age that she'd been talking to for quite a while. Things were looking good for Heather. It was 17th of December 2013 when Heather headed out for her date. They hadn't planned anything specific and were eager to get to know one another a little better. They went out to eat and ended up driving around and looking at Christmas lights as it was one of Heather's favorite things to do during the Christmas holidays. And then later, her date, Stephen Schiraldi, took her to the Inlet Mall, where he taught her how to drive a stick shift in his truck. Her date had also snapped a picture of her as she tried out driving his car. Heather sent this picture of herself having fun on her date to her best friend, Brianna, whom she lived with, and her dad, Terry. The date started around 10 p.m. and ended just after 1 a.m., 
with Heather being dropped off at her apartment with plans to meet her date again the next day for a second date. Unfortunately, this would be the final confirmed sighting of Heather Elvis. Just over half an hour later after having arrived back at her apartment, Heather received a call from Sydney Moorer. This was completely unexpected, as the pair had not had contact in weeks. During the four-minute phone call, which had been made from a payphone, Sydney apologized to Heather and expressed his love for her. He even confided in her that he had left Tammy in the hopes of being with her instead. At 1.44 a.m., Heather called her roommate Brianna, who was out of town visiting relatives, in tears. She told her that Sydney had phoned her to confess his love for her. Sydney would later deny this phone call ever took place until he was forced to admit it when the police had CCTV footage of him making a call at that same payphone at that time. Heather's roommate told her to think properly about it and not mess up all the great progress she had made in the past few weeks over him. Heather said that she would think about it, do some internet browsing, and then go to bed. But Heather could not sleep that night. At 2.29 a.m., Heather tried to call the number that Sydney had previously called several times, but received no answer. At 3.16 a.m., Heather tried to call Sydney's mobile phone, but again, received no answer. Refusing to give up, Heather called Sydney's mobile phone again. This time she got through, and the phone call lasted for just over four minutes. What was said during this phone call is unknown, but after the call, Heather got into her car and drove to a place called Peach Tree Boat Landing, a place situated just three miles from Sydney and Tammy's home. Sydney also later denied that this phone call took place too, until he was forced to admit it after the police confronted him with Heather's phone record. He then said that he did talk to her, but only to tell her to leave him alone. At 3.38 a.m., Heather arrived at Peachtree Boat Landing. She again tried to call Sydney's phone, but she received no answer. She tried multiple times after to call again at 3.39 a.m., 3.41 a.m., and 3.46 a.m., but there was still no answer from Sydney. When Heather was trying to reach Sydney on his mobile, two CCTV cameras picked up a vehicle, a black Ford F-150, which was similar to that owned by Sydney and Tammy Moorer, coming from the direction of their house and headed towards Peachtree Boat Landing. The following evening, Heather's car, which was a green Dodge Intrepid, was found parked at Peachtree Landing on the Waccamaw River by a local policeman who was patrolling the area. After running the license plate and discovering that the car was registered to Heather's father, Terry Elvis, police went to her parents' house. The police questioned Heather's dad about the car, and Terry had a spare set of keys, so they went to the car, and they noticed that her keys, ID, purse, and phone were not inside. The police then allowed Terry to search the car and then let him drive it home. Terry tried calling her over and over again, but the call would just go straight to voicemail. When the police went to her apartment, they didn't find Heather there, and they also noticed that she didn't show up for work. The search for missing Heather Elvis was now underway. Friends and family created posters and leaflets and set up the Facebook page, Find Heather Elvis. Whilst police were looking for Heather and doing their investigations, suspicions soon quickly fell on Sydney and Tammy Moore due to the evidence of the texts, phone calls, and public knowledge of the affair between Heather and Sydney. Sydney and Tammy would also post on Facebook about the situation and spoke very disrespectfully of Heather and her family. Sydney posted, Heather was a girl who traded fellatio for pumpkin-spiced lattes, amongst other things. Tammy also posted messages, including a lengthy status. Well, Sydney cheated on me in the months of September-October with a psycho whore who has since gone missing. Evidence against Sydney kept piling up. The detectives noted his pickup leaving the Peachtree Landing area at 3.45 a.m. They searched it and found out that he had detached the GPS system on the night of December 18th, which hindered detectives from confirming that the car on CCTV had been his. With no concrete evidence, Sydney was let go whilst detectives continued the investigation. On February 21st, 2014, Sydney and Tammy Moore were arrested and charged with kidnapping, obstruction of justice, and two charges of indecent exposure after an 11-hour search. They were charged with indecent exposure for taking sexually explicit pictures of themselves in public areas, as well as obstruction of justice for lying to police about the payphone. 
On February 24, 2014, police held a press conference and announced that they had been charged with Heather Elvis's murder. They claimed to have discovered evidence that led them to suspect Sidney and Tammy kidnapped and murdered Heather. Sidney and Tammy were released from prison after 11 months in 2015. Their bond was set at $100,000 per person. At the bond hearing, prosecutors stated that there was no direct link between them and Heather's disappearance. The Moorer family claimed they were threatened by the Elvis family, so they had a tracking system installed and were advised to avoid the Elvis family, including on social media. The murder charges were dismissed without prejudice in March 2016, which means they could charge them again with murder if they chose to. The kidnapping charges were also reduced to pending. They also dropped the charges of indecent exposure against both of them. On June 20, 2016, Sydney's trial for the kidnapping of Heather Elvis began, and it was revealed in court that Heather was possibly pregnant. The detectives discovered that when Sydney went to Walmart, he purchased a pregnancy test and cigars. Afterward, Sydney then went to the payphone to call Heather and then to meet up with Heather. Sydney explained that the pregnancy test was for Tammy because they were trying for a child. Even though the Moorer's home security footage showed them washing their car after December 18th, burning rags, and also having a receipt for a pregnancy test in their possession, Sydney's kidnapping charge resulted in a mistrial after the jury was hung, which occurs when the jury is unable to reach an agreement. With no body and no evidence that Sydney murdered Heather, ten of the jury members wanted to convict him, while two did not. In August of 2017, Sydney went to trial again, this time for the obstruction of justice charges, and was found guilty. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Meanwhile, the prosecution made plans to retry Sydney for kidnapping in the future. In October 2018, five years after Heather went missing, Tammy was put on trial for kidnapping and conspiracy. At the trial, it was revealed that Tammy was infuriated by her husband's affair with Heather, especially after rumors began to circulate that Heather was pregnant in December 2013. Moreover, a family friend of the Moorers named Donald Demarino testified that he saw an image of Heather on Tammy's phone at a family cookout that was held after Heather went missing. Donald mentioned that in the image, it did not appear that Heather was able to walk or talk. He was allegedly so distressed by said image that he left the cookout after seeing it. The image in question was not shown, nor were any additional details given. However, this testimony and all the other evidence provided by the prosecution were enough to convince the jury to reach a guilty verdict in a little under two hours. She was found guilty and sentenced to 30 years in prison on both counts, and she was eligible for parole after serving a specific amount of time. They have never disclosed what happened to Heather Elvis that night in December 2013, and they both have been trying to appeal their convictions for years, insisting they're innocent, yet to no avail. Today, 47-year-old Sydney is incarcerated at the Maximum Security Lee Correctional Institution in Bishopville, with a projected release date of March 31, 2044, and 50-year-old Tammy is at the Medium Security Leith Correctional Institution in Greenwood, with a projected release date of May 9, 2043. To this day, no trace of Heather Elvis has ever been found. A tribute garden has been set up at Peachtree Boat Landing in dedication to her. Heather's disappearance left an indelible void in the lives of her family and friends. The pain they endured, the questions left unanswered, and the yearning for closure became an enduring chapter in the story of Myrtle Beach. The Myrtle Beach community, bound by a shared hope for answers, rallied together in search efforts and vigils. The story of Heather resonated far beyond the coastal town, echoing the challenges of navigating the complexities of love and relationships. As we remember Heather Rochelle Elvis, may her memory be a reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of compassion and understanding. If you found this video compelling, leave a like, and your thoughts in the comments, be sure to subscribe and check out our other videos.